and this is the second video about dynamical arrays and we will continue from where we where we ended in the last video it was this code we created we created two uh, two times a new dynamical memory so let's go and see how it looks in the in the ram memory so this is how it looks so we are creating this this um, this array here first we are creating here uh, three integers and um, this is the this is how it looks in the memory so uh, for example it could be located at address 53 so obviously the next I next item of the array would be 54 and last one would be at 55 so these are the memory memory addresses like in the previous videos where we talked about normal arrays it's the same thing here and um, okay and so a a now in in this situation when we create like this a will be the address of the first item so 53 so a the value of a will be 53 here so if we for example if we do this and we print using c out c out we print the value of a just a it will print 53 in this example also we can get the address of the first item in two different ways also uh, oh sorry uh, another way is doing like this so we could just first here ask that um, uh, the first integer which is this a0 this is the first integer of the array and then just ask the address of that it will return exactly the same 53 and taking the address of the second item will return 54 and then we are doing delete here this line here so let's see what how it looks looks in the picture so later in the code we are calling delete the a array and now uh, so now the, when we call this delete the computer will the computer will mark this area to be to not belong anymore to a so somebody else can use it after that so we can't touch this area anymore and on this line we are creating a new new array and it will be located at a different place in the memory so it could be for example located at at 88 so this time a will a will be 88 and using the same logic we have here everything would remain the same but we would now have only two items according to this allocation here well let's go back to the code now and um, let's look at the next example what I have here this one so let's compare now uh, we are using the normal fixed size array here which we talked about the previous tutorials and here we have the new new dynamical array so I'm just um, allocating the normal way dynamical array here three items and now we are looping and also this fixed size array I set the same size so we can loop loop both of them at the same time so this loop here is looping starting from zero all the way to two we are looping all the items so we are always setting the item so, so so what we are doing here is that we are setting b all the items b to be even numbers so zero to four and let's let's make all the items in in an array a to be odd numbers Th so this is how we would do it so first i is zero so b zero set to zero times two which is zero and this would be a zero set to one plus zero times two which becomes one so on the first round this is zero and a a zero the first a item will be one and then we go here and in increase i by one this is true 
and we go inside i is now one so the second item of of both of these arrays will be b will be one times two which is which is two and the second item of array a will be one plus one times two which is two which is two yes sorry it's not two it's three <laughs> and so on and it will continue the loop and then we will we will print both of them here let's run this code here so we can see it works works and uh, yes compiled and run <coughs> so here we can see it we are using both of the arrays the same way that's what i wanted to show here that there is absolutely no difference how we use them after that after 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 the allocation and let's go now to the next next um, example which will be let's go and see what i have here next next i will have a pointer okay let, let's next look at uh, what is the benefit of using dynamical arrays so here i have wrote a little bit well the benefit is that we can we can allocate the size of the memory we want exactly so let's say that we want only 10 items so we don't need to allocate like 2 million items to hold to hold to be able to have all the possibilities for example um, let's say that the user will tell that how, how big array they want uh, let's say that they, uh, how many items they want, how many integers they want. Let's say that they say, okay, I want 200 items. But how, how could this fixed size array know what is the maximum amount of uh, items the user wants? Well, it does not. It does not. That's the problem here. So if we are using fixed size array and some, especially some, some old C, C programs and games and all they actually do did, did this quite a lot and i don't think it's a good good practice to do it but um, so we would need to allocate so much so so large array that it's able to hold the maximum maximum asked size that's the problem so we are wasting a lot of memory memory here because we don't know how big it's going to be so we have to make it very very large that it's able to hold the maximum size but it's different it's different with with uh, dynamical arrays because we can always delete it and make it smaller or bigger whatever the user wants next so we are just dynamically allocating exactly the size we need and no no overhead no extra memory created here and so that's the benefit with dynamical arrays in the next video we're gonna do an interesting project which is over here we will create a proper program actually and we will use dynamical array there and we will see how how good it is actually and then we try to think that how would we do the same thing with the fixed sized array and we will see that it, we would have troubles with the fixed uh, fixed size array okay thank you for watching <coughs>